Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm your host, Ellen Barrett, and my first guest today is the VP of Operations at Universal Insurance Agency Corporation. That is a mouthful. Yes, it but is. But a new position, it sounds like, too, in November. Yes. So congratulations for that. Thank you. And this is Christine Nygren. She's the VP of Operations over there, and we're so happy to have you on the show today. Thanks Thank for being for here. Thank you for having me. And we're talking about what you may think is obvious, insurance. It's in the name, so that's what we're talking about today. And I just want to start off with what kinds of insurance do you guys offer and help your clients with? Uh, we do personal home and auto insurance, uh, individual life, health, disability, long-term care. A big one right now is Medicare. Sure. Um, we also help small businesses with commercial insurance and um, employee benefits. So a little bit of everything, it yes. sounds like. Wow, yes. kind of a whole spectrum of different things that you guys offer. And that's really nice too, because I'm sure for a lot of people, maybe they're interested in multiple, or they need to learn more about a bunch of different kinds of insurance. Correct, we take kind of a risk management approach. Okay, very cool. And so what do you think your primary benefit is to your clients? Well, as I said, we take kind of a risk management approach, yeah. so it's like one-stop shopping. So what does a risk management approach mean for someone who may not really understand what that means? Looking at um, all the way around sure. people's risks with insurance. So mm -hmm. most people have home and auto risks, uh, life insurance, disability insurance. Some people need help with financial planning. Mm -hmm. so. And is that something too that you know everybody can benefit from of having that service and having that expert? Absolutely. Yeah. And it sounds like, too, you know, you never want to think about the worst things happening, but it's always good to plan. Right. Awesome. And does your agency work with just one carrier or multiple insurance carriers? We have about uh, 20 standard carriers, as we call them. Um, and then we also work with a couple brokers that are what we consider surplus lines markets. So those, those risks that are um, not quite the fit in a standard market. Sure. And is it important too to offer, you know, kind of a variety of different carriers for your clients? Yes. Yeah. And why is that? Um, it gives them lots of options in terms of pricing, coverages, um, you know, what fits their individual needs. Perfect. And how long has your agency been in business? Well, collectively, we probably have about 75 years of um, insurance expertise. Wow. Uh, Jerry Balwig is the original owner of Universal Insurance, and so he started the agency about 40 years ago. Wow, so almost really a lifetime of experience yes. put together. Yes. And why is that so important to bring that to your clients, you know, all of that experience? Well, a lot of people, just like when you go to the hospital, you know, you want a doctor who's done many surgeries, not just <laughs> one. Uh, same thing with insurance. You know, you want somebody who's got a lot of years of experience. That's a good way to put it, and I like that kind of analogy because it's true. It is right. true. Right. And could you just name a couple different things that you offer to your clients or prospective clients? Maybe top three things? Um, we do free, free initial insurance reviews, uh, which is nice for people. A lot of people, I find, don't really know what kind of coverages they have mm. and what it all means. That's me. Uh, yeah. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> we also offer a personal touch. Um, so they don't have several different people that they're dealing with on certain products. That's so important because you don't want to feel like you're getting juggled around, you know, and that people don't really understand you or what you need. Right. So it's very cool. Right. And then number three, was that number two? That was number two. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> One more. Um, I think number three, the primary thing is that because we work with so many different carriers, we yeah. can find them the best price and the best product for their individual need. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. if somebody is watching this and they're thinking, I could use their help, I need their help, how can they get in touch with you or the agency? Um, we are on a website at universalinsurance.biz. Mm -hmm. um, they can email me at cnigren at universalinsurance.biz or our telephone number is 608-216-7060. And where are you guys located? Um, we're on the east or west side of Raymond Road, Okay. Uh, closer to Verona. So would that be by appointment only, or could somebody stop in there too and make no, an appointment? No, feel free to stop in. That's so great. perfect. And like you said, you know, over 75 years of experience. So really, you guys are bringing something you know totally different to the people in the Madison area, and I'm sure the greater Madison area. Correct. People outside the area as well. Yep. Awesome. Christine Nigren, thank you so much for being here today. I appreciate it. Thank you. And again, she is the VP of Operations at Universal Insurance Agency Corporation. So if you have any insurance questions, feel free to contact her or call someone at their agency or just stop by. Thank Correct. you so much for being here today. Thank you. Talk of the Town will be back right after this. 
Welcome back to Talk of the Town. My next guest is Foxy Veronica's Peach Pies, and you may be wondering, what in the heck is that? <laughs> and to tell me more today, I'm joined by Jessica Jane and Dana. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. So let's just start off with the obvious. People are wondering, what is this? What is this event? <laughs> um, it is a reunion for a Caberlesque troupe that I started um, and we co-produced for, it's been going for 12 years mm -hmm. now. I started it in 2004 and it's wow. kind of a variety show, cabaret, burlesque troupe all mixed together. So how did you get the idea to combine all those different things? Um, it, it actually was presented to me by a local club person um, a long time ago. And mm -hmm. what he wanted to do, I didn't feel really as comfortable with. Sure. So I kind of took the idea and ran with it. And I have a musical theater background, so it naturally was a bit more cabaret than burlesque. <laughs> so how did you get the whole group involved of the people who are involved in the show? What's the history behind that and the whole reunion? Um, one of the main ways I would say is people came to the show and one of the, one, the main things that we do is we try to give women a platform to do whatever they want to do. And it's a very empowering and freeing feeling. Uh -huh. And a lot of women would come up to Dana or myself after a show and say, how can I get involved? It looks like so much fun. And we would say, come to a rehearsal. Awesome. <laughs> if you want to add anything to that. <laughs> sure. So it really is getting people involved, too, who are interested in the past, who maybe did watch the show. Not only watch the show, but what was, what's really amazing about our show is how many um, people we bring in and how many uh, women that we empower with our show. Mm -hmm. um, because we have a variety of, of women of different races. We have a variety of women of different body styles. So you can see yourself represented on stage doing a variety of different things, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And that's so important too because I think a lot of times you know in different shows or even on TV and in the media it's not representing the actual population and yeah. so that is really important for people to see so it's very cool Definitely. and so um, again what should viewers expect to see on stage and it sounds like a little bit of everything we will have um, <laughs> well first off it's not just us we're gonna yeah. have uh, several people that are gonna be playing with us sexy Esther uh, uh, Zed Kenzo uh, DJ Milbot is gonna be closing out the night with some great tunes awesome. but for our show we're gonna be dancing singing there's comedy skits. stuff. yeah Wow yeah balloon so popping <laughs> Rope stuff. We're not even sure what all is going to be there yet. <laughs> It'll be carnivalesque without, you know, carnivals. Yeah. <laughs> but no it, clowns. It really no. sounds like an experience. It like, is an experience. Yeah. Like you're going to go and it's going to be, you know, totally blow your mind. What's, we, we what's really <laughs> great is, is honestly most of our, our audience is women. Our, yeah. The women fans are our best fans. They are the awesome. ones that run up to the stage. They are the <laughs> ones that are screaming and hollering. Yeah. It's, it's a really great dynamic. It awesome. really is. So what are the different backgrounds of all the different performers who will be a part of the show? Oh, it's so varied. It's um, like I'm musical theater and I'm a yoga instructor and I work in human services. Wow. Um, and we have other people who work in... We have nurses. Yeah. We, I, I'm in human services and, and real estate. Uh, we have... We've had teachers. Teachers. We've had stage management. Like, wow. We've had everybody. everything. So all different backgrounds, it <gasps> sounds like. Something for everybody to relate to. Yeah. Very cool. So why a reunion show now? Well, it's been five years <laughs> since we've been on that stage, sure. and um, and honestly, Jess and I took a break because we do a lot more uh, traditional theater. Yeah. Okay. So after five years off stage, it it just seemed time to rally the troops again, yeah. and um, the burlesque scene in Madison itself has has really exploded thanks to a, mm -hmm. a lot of great people that are still involved. Yeah. So. Foxy Veronica still lives on in the Peach Pies Cabrillesque. After we left the show, they kind of took the show and ran with it and turned it into their own thing, which is really awesome. Because it's like, we had this idea and now it's still living. And there's wow. other troops that have come up around it. And it's really a fantastic feeling. And it's a great empowering feeling. Awesome. So let's get to the details, because people are probably thinking, this sounds like a blast. You guys are a blast. Like, where is it? When can we go? How do we get tickets? High noon um, on July 8th, it is at 9 o'clock. The tickets are $12. You can buy tickets in advance through Event B. Um, the link should be somewhere on the graphic right under us. On the us. screen here. <laughs> look down here. <laughs> um, you can also look, look us up on Facebook under Foxy Veronica's Peach Pies. Mm -hmm. um, Google. Google us. <laughs> it's, it's an amazing tool. Yes. Social media. Find yes. them everywhere. Yeah. You can, <laughs> 
Perfect. So the details should also be listed on your screen if you're interested in it. It should be a good time. Sounds like it will be. Wonderful. Thank you so much for being here today, ladies. I appreciate it. Thank you Thank for having you. us. Talk of the Town will be back right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town, and I'm joined today by a familiar face. You've been on Talk of the Town quite a few times now, Greg. Mm -hmm, right. Happy to have you back again. Good to be back. And mm -hmm. you are the owner and a clinical anaplastologist. Did I get that right? You got it right. I've Perfect. I've been practicing this behind the scenes how many times now. Very so good. It's a hard I'm glad word. I got it mm -hmm. right. Thank you. And you are with Medical Art Prosthetics, LLC. Correct. And yep. I'm just so amazed. So I guess my first question is, is what are facial, what is facial prosthesis? And I've been practicing that word too and I think I got it right. Yeah. <laughs> no, you did perfect on that one too. Good. Facial prosthetics or, or, or a facial prosthesis is uh, a replacement for a structure of the face. Okay. Namely an eye, nose, or ear. I have some examples. I'm going to kind of go through them real quick just yeah. so people can understand Please. exactly what it is. So well, these are, these are samples. These are actually models. Them, you know? Right. So here, I don't know if you can capture that, but this is an example of a nasal prosthesis that wow. would go on to the face so to restore is that like the nose. Magnetic? This one is, just, one as a, is. just as a, a nice, convenient sample. Sure. And some do attach magnetically. This is an example of an ear prosthesis wow. that, that would snap onto a, a bar. Wow. Snap down on there tightly. And, and then I don't you know orbital. how well you can see it too through the camera, but this looks very, very real. I mean, that was my first reaction when you walked in is, you know, I did kind of did a double take because it looks so real. Yeah, people aren't used to seeing these yeah. sorts of things. So I, I bring the picture so that to really illustrate what these things are and what, sure. what the outcomes are. So this is an example of an individual without a nose. And then the result with wow. this prosthesis on. So uh, pardon me for going so, so quick, no, quickly, sure. but I know there's other questions. So this is an example of someone without an ear. And then with the ear prosthesis. That is unbelievable. So it's obviously you can't not even surgery. See right. The difference. It's simply a replacement, a prosthetic replacement that's removable. Sure. To replace the part that's missing. So here he is with his what we call an orbital prosthesis. That is incredible. Huh? How do people learn about your services? Because they are pretty different. Well, uh, people typically learn about it when they need a prosthesis. Right. Unfortunately, you know, so they're referred by their doctor or they see our website if they mm -hmm. do their own research, which is always really helpful. We have a really good website for people sure. to, uh, Facebook sometimes, um, uh, and then just word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And are there other providers who offer these types of services too? There are. There's other prosthetic providers uh, that, that do get involved in facial prosthetics from time to time, like dentists, mm -hmm. prosthodontists that make dentures, mm -hmm. or ocularists, people that specialize in just making the eye itself. Wow. Sometimes they'll make a facial prosthesis. Even limb prosthetic and orthotic companies, if the need arises, they might make a facial prosthesis. Sure. So what kind of sets you guys apart in the Midwest and really Wisconsin from those other providers? Um, I specialize. This mm -hmm. is all, basically all I do. Right. I was trained and certified as a clinical anaplastolog uh, anaplastologist, but I also was certified as a prosthetist, so I'm dual board certified, but I do specialize only in facial, essentially facial and some finger wow. hand prosthetics. And it really is like an art. It's almost like, you know, a beautiful piece of artwork and a sculpture that is really going to change someone's life. And I know we were kind of talking about this too off camera, but just if you could share with the viewers too, what is the most rewarding part of kind of what you do in having this business? Yeah. Well, you, I'm glad you brought up the yeah. art idea because that makes it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it absolutely makes the success of the prosthesis. There's yeah. no technology. You can't do it part time. It's a, it's it's got to be a full-on dedicated art project, each wow. prosthesis, to get the result that somebody can be proud of and feel really good about themselves. And in my case, I've been doing it so long, what's really fulfilling is to try to get other really talented anaplastologists involved. I have colleagues, uh, associates on the West Coast in California and in New York, um, and so we're getting other people that are really talented medical artists to be able to bring these kinds of things to people. That's so incredible and you know it's something I know it, like you said you know people aren't really thinking about this until you need one but I mean trying to think about what people who you know maybe they don't have a nose or one eye or something how right. big of a difference this could make in their entire life of how they see themselves and other people too so it's got to just be a huge impact. It does yeah. It's very wow. 
And so what is the most important advice you could offer someone needing um, a nose or an eye or an ear prosthesis mm -hmm. and, you know, is maybe kind of going through that right now? I sound like a broken record, but it's all about when you're in that position, rely on your own instincts to, to be assertive in, in right. asking different providers to show many photographs, many examples of results, mm -hmm. because it is a results dependent specialty. Sure. You know, it's not a matter of somebody, just finding somebody that knows how to make one. You gotta right. find a specialist. Um, and so I, I would say to people, you can't, you can listen to your referring physician, but you still also have to do your own homework. Got to do your research. homework, yep. an important lesson. Greg, thank you so yeah. much for being here today. You're very welcome. We could talk forever. This is just so interesting. This is Medical Arts Prosthetics, LLC, and you can find more information at their website or give them a call. Talk of the Town will be back right after this. Welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm joined now by Ismail, and he's the owner of Wisconsin Granite. Thanks for being here today. My pleasure. And also joined by Behar, and he's the manager of Wisconsin Granite. Thanks for being here today, gentlemen. Not a problem. So let's just start off with people who may not be familiar with your business. Where are you guys located, and what do you do? Uh, we are located in McFarland. Um, our address is going to appear on the screen here shortly. But so look below. <laughs> <laughs> so we're located in McFarland, and that's where we do all the manufacturing. Awesome. And, and manufacturing of what, if people couldn't pick up from the title? Um, of granite countertops. Very cool. So a bunch of different varieties. I guess maybe for people who don't know a lot about granite, is there just like one type? Are there multiple types? Um, I mean, we carry all different sorts. Uh, we have over 120 different colors in stock. We also over carry... Over 120? Uh, yep. Wow, okay. So it's a lot. Very cool. And 120 yeah. different styles, colors. Exactly. Patterns, you name it. And then we also do carry a little bit of quartz too, which is engineered products. Very cool. Beautiful stuff. I know I've, I've stopped into your store and it's just gorgeous, gorgeous things if you're thinking of remodeling your kitchen or your home. Or I know, Ismail, even your office is beautiful. Beautiful for an office space. A way to change that up too. Right. That that was a surprise to me. Yeah. I was out of country. I went to Brazil uh -huh. to um, bring some uh, colors from Brazil in here. Uh -huh. So when I came back, I see the table that they have done for me as a surprise. Was it a good surprise? It was a great surprise. A good <laughs> surprise. It's beautiful. You'll have to stop by and check it out if you do stop by their store. And so what are some of the different benefits for choosing Wisconsin Granite versus other companies? I mean, I would say the biggest benefit is that um, within the local area, we're pro probably the company that imports the most amount of products sure. um, from different countries, uh, countries like Brazil, Italy, uh, India. Um, he sacrifices a lot of times to go to, to go to these places, a lot of family uh -huh. time, and just to bring people these different colors that they're not used to seeing anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So, you know, through his sacrifice, that's really what the benefit comes to uh, the area mm -hmm. is that nobody has these different colors. And now going off of that, I just know because I've met you a couple times now that when they say that they're going, you know, to bring back granite, they really mean it. It is really you. You are physically going on a trip to bring back granite that you hand picked and hand select. Right, I do. It's um, out of a couple of thousand colors uh -huh. that I, I pick. It's kind of fun. I would think it would be. I mean, work, you're working, but you also get to travel to these beautiful places and bring back different things, you know, that really make people happy and really enhance right. their space. Right. Another beauty, we're not limited with wholesaler companies' choices. Mm -hmm. Sure. We do our own choices. When I go visit companies, now I'm used to it. I've been there six, seven times. Mm -hmm. So I rent a car and I drive around to quarries. I, yeah. When companies see me, they're surprised. <laughs> and they say that you came here by yourself yes. in this danger road. <laughs> <laughs> so you really are getting that service. And when they say they're actually hand selecting things, you know, they really mean it. And that's just some of the quality and service you get with Wisconsin Granite. And how long have you guys been in business at Wisconsin Granite? We opened up this place uh, end of 2008. Okay. 
So it's been about eight years. In the McFarland area? Yes, in McFarland area, Perfect. right and off the Beltline. It really is such a short drive too if you are in Madison or any of the neighboring communities. You just hop on you know, the Beltline and it's a pretty quick drive over to McFarland too. Right. So a quick drive for that. And do you have any plans for the future with Wisconsin Granite? Ah, that's a great question. <laughs> sure. I mean, our, our plans are uh, really to, to keep staying local, mm -hmm. uh, keep employing local uh, workers, you know, give the economy around us a little bit of a, a boost and uh, just help pretty much everybody achieve their goals in their kitchen, which is beautify their kitchens and uh, just pretty much keep maintaining the area with, uh, with beautiful colors. I really like the um, kind of connection to between employing people locally and bringing something that's local, a local business, local products, but also then incorporating beautiful things from around the world. And you're really bringing that global tie, you know, down to the local level and such a great service and um, business to have here in our area. So thank you both for being here today. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Thank you. And again, yeah. this is Wisconsin Granite. You can find them over in McFarland. Thank you for watching Talk of the Town. We'll be here next week only on Channel 57.